Today we will talk about a story that transcends time, the story of Elisha, a narrative full of miracles, epic confrontations, and life lessons that resonate to this day. Imagine a world where divine power manifests itself through extraordinary acts, where waters divide. Entire armies are blinded by prayer, and the simple touch of bones can bring the dead back to life. This is not the plot of a fantasy film, but the real story of Elisha, a man whose faith and destiny have intertwined in ways that defy imagination. If you think you've heard all about biblical miracles, prepare to dive into a journey where every turn is more surprising than the previous one. Who was Elisha? How could he accomplish such extraordinary things? And more importantly, what are the eternal truths your life teaches us about faith, power and purpose? Stay with us and discover the mysteries of the life of one of the greatest prophets of the Bible in a story that promises not only to inform, but to transform the way you see the world around you. In a land where the horizon blends with the gold of the fields, under the heat of an inclement sun, we find Elisha, son of Shapat, delivered to hard work in the fields of Abel Mehola. His strained muscles moved in harmony with the oxen, working the land with determination and hope for a bountiful harvest. Elisha's life, until then, was the image of the routine of the children of the earth, days of sweat in exchange for sustenance taken from the ground. But Elisha's fate was about to change. In the vibrant heart of Abel Mehola, under the scorching sun that gilded the vast fields, the life of Elisha, the dedicated son of Shaphat, was about to change irreversibly. Accustomed to the arduous pace of fieldwork, Elisha found himself that day performing a task as routine as significant, plowing the fertile land with his oxen. The simplicity of his life, marked by the sweat of his work and the earth beneath his nails, was a testimony to his dedication and humility. But like the clouds that suddenly shade the landscape, life has its ways of surprising and transforming the ordinary into extraordinary. The appearance of Elijah, the venerated prophet whose fame as a man of God preceded him as a fire rages through the prairie, was as sudden as it was unexpected. Elijah, moved by a divine force, chose that moment and that man, Elisha, to continue his prophetic legacy. Elijah's gesture in casting his mantle upon Elisha was not merely symbolic. It was a divine call, an invitation to enter into a journey of faith, service, and transformation. Elisha, faced with this transcendental call, now faced a decision that would define the course of his life. He could have continued his work, ignoring the meaning of that act and the silent voice within him that whispered for change. But Elisha was no man to ignore fate when it knocked at the door. His response to the call was as dramatic as it was meaningful. He sacrificed the oxen with which he plowed and used the tools of the plow to prepare a meal for the people. This was not just a farewell to his previous life, it was a ritual of total commitment to his new mission. Elisha was renouncing everything he knew, offering not only his future, but also his past to divine service. Learning alongside Elijah was not an easy promise. It meant entering a reality where the natural and the supernatural are intertwined, where miracles are as real as the earth beneath the feet, and where faith is both a shield and a sword. For Elisha, the days that followed were a mixture of wonder and learning, a period of intense preparation for the missions to come. Elijah, with his indomitable spirit and unwavering faith, became not only a mentor, but a portal to the deep understanding of God's power and mercy. Every moment beside Elijah was a lesson, every miracle witnessed a revelation. Elisha absorbed not only the knowledge transmitted by his master, but also the essence of his devotion to God. This period of preparation was essential, Stoning Elisha not only as a prophet, but as a human being capable of facing the immense challenges that awaited him. Through the guidance of Elijah, Elisha learned that serving God was not just about performing powerful acts, but about understanding and acting according to the divine will, cultivating a deep relationship with the Creator and walking in faith, even when the path ahead was invisible to mortal eyes. Elisha's journey, though only at the beginning, was already marked by sacrifice, faith, and the promise of a grand purpose. He, who once bowed under the sun of Abel Mahola, now stood as a beacon of hope and a testimony to the transforming power of faith. 
His path forward would be punctuated by miracles and challenges, by learning and leadership. But at that moment of acceptance and commitment, Elisha already showed himself as a man ready to face destiny, armed with the strength of his faith and the certainty that, under divine guidance, his every step was part of a larger plan. Thus, the story of Elisha unfolds, leaving viewers on the verge of a path full of wonders and mysteries, eager to witness how this simple man would become one of the greatest prophets whose actions and faith would shape the course of history. In a world where the line between the divine and the ground is often blurred, Elisha's journey under Elijah's tutelage unfolds like a tapestry filled with faith, power, and divine revelations. At the heart of this saga is the epic confrontation on Mount Carmel, an event that not only witnesses the supremacy of Elijah's God, but also serves as a turning point in Elisha's life, shaping him for the challenges and wonders yet to come. The story begins at a time of palpable tension in Israel. The people, divided in their loyalty between the God of Israel and the pagan gods promoted by Queen Jezebel, were at the crossroads of faith. Elijah, with the confidence of those who serve the true God, challenges the prophets of Baal to a definitive test of power on Mount Carmel. Elisha, as a disciple and witness, watches with watchful eyes and beating heart, knowing that the events that would unfold would not only define Israel's future, but would also deepen his own understanding and relationship with God. The challenge was simple, but its meaning profound. Each side would prepare an altar and invoke its God to light the fire. The divinity that responded with fire would be recognized as the true God. While the prophets of Baal cried in vain, Elijah prepared his altar with a calm that challenged the surrounding chaos, a serenity that Elisha could not help but admire. When Elijah finally prayed, the fire from heaven came down, consuming the sacrifice, the altar, and even the surrounding water, leaving everyone present in astonishing silence. This miracle, witnessed by Elisha, was not just a demonstration of power. It was a living lesson about God's faithfulness and supremacy. In the days and months that followed, Elisha witnessed many other miracles performed by Elijah. Each of these events taught him about the nature of God and the reality of the spiritual world that permeates our earthly existence. Elisha saw how faith in God could bring provision in times of drought, resurrection from the dead and deliverance from danger. Every miracle, every lesson, forged in Elisha a spirit of strength and humility, teaching him to trust in divine guidance above all else. But perhaps more than the miracles themselves, it was Elijah's unwavering faith and his total dedication to God that most impressed Elisha. To observe Elijah in moments of solitude, fervent prayer, and total dependence on God was to witness to the true source of his power. Elisha learned that although miracles were visible manifestations of divine power, it was the close and constant relationship with God that sustained a true prophet. These experiences under Elijah's tutelage not only prepared Elisha for the future challenges of his own ministry, they also planted seeds of hope, faith and courage in his heart. Elisha's story was just beginning, but every step he took beside Elijah brought him closer to his divine destiny. For viewers, the story of Elisha alongside Elijah offers a captivating journey through the mysteries of faith, the power of prayer, and the reality of a God who intervenes in human history in dramatic and transformative ways. Through the eyes of Elisha, they are invited to explore not only the miracles of the past, but also the possibility of miracles in their own lives, arousing an insatiable curiosity about the power and presence of the divine in everyday life. In an ancient world where the breath of the divine intertwines with the lives of mortals, Elijah's transition of leadership to Elisha is not just a passing torch. It is a spiritual journey laden with faith, prophecy, and a request that would echo through the centuries. This chapter of Elisha's life begins where many stories would find their end, in the imminence of a farewell. Elijah, the prophet whose life had been marked by epic confrontations in the name of God, was now facing his last act on earth. Aware that his time has come, he undertakes a final journey with Elisha at his side, a faithful witness not only to his miracles, but also to his humanity. This moment, loaded with meaning, 
is where our history deepens, revealing the layers of a relationship forged in the faith and fire of divine service. As they traverse places marked by historical episodes of faith and challenges, Elijah gives Elisha multiple opportunities to bid farewell, to avoid the pain of the last farewell. However, Elisha, with a loyalty that transcends common understanding, refuses to leave his master. Live the Lord and live your soul which will not leave you, he declares, a promise that reflects not only his devotion to Elijah, but also his commitment to the divine call that weighed upon him. The arrival at Jordan marks the culmination of this journey. There Elijah, with a gesture reminiscent of the miracles of yore, divides the waters, allowing both to cross on dry land. This act, full of symbolism, not only mirrored the power of God working through Elijah, but also set the stage for Elisha's request, a request that would define his future ministry. Faced with the imminence of Elijah's departure, Elisha is confronted with the opportunity to ask what he wants. His choice? I ask thee a folded portion of thy spirit upon me. It was not a request for power alone, but a longing for a measure of faith, courage, and strength to continue the legacy of his master, to meet the challenges that would come and to lead the people with the same divine conviction. Elijah's response, which conditions the granting of the request to the vision of his departure, raises the tension of the narrative. When the time comes, and Elijah is caught up in heaven by a whirlwind, Elisha is witness to the fulfillment of the divine promise. The vision of the chariot of fire and the horses of fire, elements that separated master and disciple, serves as a seal of divine approval upon Elisha's request. Now alone, Elisha tears his own clothes in a gesture that symbolizes the end of one era and the beginning of another. He takes the mantle of Elijah, which had fallen during his ascension, and puts it on himself. This simple but deeply symbolic act marks the transition of leadership and the beginning of Elisha's ministry. For spectators, this transition is not just the testimony of a changing guard. It is an invitation to reflect on the meaning of true leadership, legacy and faith that extends beyond the visible. As Elisha moves away from the Jordan, the story leaves a question in the air. How will this man, now invested with a double portion of his master's spirit, face the challenges ahead? Curiosity is burning, promising a journey filled with faith, miracles, and the continual manifestation of divine power through the life of Elisha. The beginning of Elisha's ministry is marked by an act of faith as bold as it is symbolic. Standing on the banks of the Jordan, before the waters that once gave way to Elijah's command, Elisha is confronted with his first great challenge. It is not only the river that stands in its way, it is the doubt, expectation and shadow of a monumental legacy. The moment is tense, full of expectations. The eyes of the sons of the prophets, witnesses of this rite of passage, are fixed upon him, silently questioning whether Elijah's greatness could somehow fall upon Elisha. With Elijah's cloak in hand, Elisha faces the Jordan not only as a physical obstacle, but as the barrier between him and his destiny. Where is the Lord, the God of Elijah? He cries, his voice echoing among the surrounding hills. As he strikes the waters with his mantle, a miracle happens. The waters divide, recreating the path Elijah had made before him, and Elisha crosses on dry land. This act, his first miracle, is a powerful declaration of his faith and God's continued presence in his ministry. The division of the waters of the Jordan is not just an echo of the past, it is a sign for the future. Elisha, now recognized as the legitimate successor of Elijah, gains not only respect, but the admiration of the sons of the prophets. They who had followed Elijah with reverence and fear see in Elisha the continuation of a lineage of power and faith. The spirit of Elijah rests upon Elisha. They murmur among themselves, an acknowledgement of his authority and the divine anointing upon his life. As Elisha moves away from the banks of the Jordan, the impact of his first miracle reverberates through the lands of Israel. This beginning of ministry, though marked by an act of divine power, is only the prelude to a journey that will test Elisha's faith, wisdom and courage. For the viewer, the story of Elisha is an invitation to explore the mysteries of faith, the power of prayer, and the reality of a God who acts in unexpected and miraculous ways. The story continues. 
promising a tapestry rich in miracles, challenges, and above all, a demonstration of God's love and power. In the rich and complex tapestry that makes up the life of Elisha, every woven miracle is a story of faith, power, and divine compassion. After taking on the mantle of a prophet, Elisha not only walks in the footsteps of Elijah, but also walks his own path, leaving indelible marks on the sands of time and in the hearts of the people of Israel. After Elijah's ascension to heaven, Elisha became his successor as the chief prophet of Israel. One of his first miraculous acts, demonstrating the divine power conferred upon him, took place in the city of Jericho. The inhabitants of the city approached Elisha with a serious problem. The waters of Jericho were contaminated, unfit for consumption, causing death and sterility in the land. At a time when water was a vital resource for survival and prosperity, this situation endangered the life and future of the community. With an action that symbolized both divine intervention and prophetic wisdom, Elisha asked for a new plate full of salt. He went to the source of the contaminated waters and poured the salt into them, proclaiming the words of the Lord, I have healed these waters, hence there will be no more death or sterility. Miraculously, the waters were purified, not only remedying an immediate physical problem, but also restoring hope and the possibility of a prosperous future for Jericho. This miracle of Elisha not only confirmed his role as the rightful successor of Elijah, but also demonstrated God's continued care for his people, emphasizing that under his command, even the most desolate situations can be transformed and made alive. In a time of despair and need, the narrative of the multiplication of the widow's oil as described in the second book of Kings chapter 4, verses 1 to 7, highlights one of the most exciting miracles performed by the prophet Elisha, a widow facing an overwhelming debt and on the verge of losing her two children to slavery as payment to the creditor, found herself in a time of deep crisis. At that time, the loss of children to debt slavery was a brutal reality, and the widow without resources or support turned to Elisha for divine help. Elisha, moved by the precarious situation of the woman, asked her about what she had at home, to which she replied having only a little olive oil. With compassion and following a divine instruction, he directed the widow to collect as many empty jars as possible from the neighbors. Once collected, she should close the doors of her house and start pouring the olive oil into all containers. In an act of faith and obedience, the widow followed the prophet's instructions. Miraculously, the oil, which initially was little, multiplied continuously, filling each jar until there was no more emptiness. This act not only prevented their children from being taken away, but also provided the means for the widow to sell excess olive oil, pay all her debts, and still support her family. The miracle symbolizes the divine provision that overcomes the darkest circumstances, demonstrating that when one seeks God's guidance and acts with faith, even the little one has can be transformed into abundance, ensuring not only survival, but also the ability to thrive in the face of adversity. The story of the resurrection of the son of the Shunammite woman, narrated in the second book of Kings chapter 4 verses 32 to 37, is one of the most exciting and miraculous episodes in the Bible, illustrating the power of faith and divine intervention through the prophet Elisha. The woman of Shulem had shown extraordinary hospitality to Elisha, providing her with a place to rest whenever she passed her city. In recognition of her kindness, Elisha prophesied that she would give birth to a son, which came to pass, bringing great joy to the family. However, this joy turned to despair when the boy, already growing up, died suddenly. Refusing to accept the fate of her son, the Shunammite woman sought Elisha for help. Demonstrating unwavering faith, she not only believed in Elisha's ability to intervene, but also in God's will to restore life. Elisha, accompanied by the woman, returned to her home, where the boy lay dead. In an act of deep supplication and faith, Elisha prayed to the Lord. As he prayed, the boy's body began to warm up, and miraculously, the boy sneezed seven times and opened his eyes, signaling his resurrection. This miracle not only reiterates the divine power manifested through Elisha, but also underlines the importance of genuine faith, perseverance, and the reward of hospitality and kindness.
The resurrection of the son of the Shunammite woman is a story of hope, showing that death and despair can be overcome by faith and the power of God. But a prophet's life is filled with challenges, as arduous as his miracles are wonderful. The incident in which young men mock Elisha, calling him bald, recorded in the second book of Kings chapter 2 verses 23 to 24, is an intriguing and frequently debated episode within theological studies. The narrative takes place shortly after Elisha assumed the mantle of prophet in succession to Elijah. As he approached Bethel, a group of young people left the city and began to mock him, exclaiming, Go up, bald! Go up, bald! In response, Elisha cursed them in the name of the Lord, and two bears came out of the forest attacking 42 of the youth. This event is rich in symbolism and lessons. First, the mockery of the youth was not just a personal offense, but a disregard for the prophetic authority Elisha bore. Come on up, Baldy, can be interpreted as a disdain not only for his appearance, but also a challenge to his ascension as a spiritual leader perhaps even an ironic reference to Elijah's ascension to heaven. The severity of divine punishment through bears reflects the gravity of insulting a messenger of God and by extension God himself. This account serves as a reminder of the importance of respect for spiritual authority and the consequences of irreverence. On the vast chessboard that is the geopolitics of the ancient Middle East, Elisha emerges not only as a prophet of God, but as a key player in the machinations of kingdoms and empires. His ability to influence kings and commanders, revealing even the most secret plans of the king of Syria, marks a fascinating chapter in his journey, full of intrigues and divine revelations. As the story unfolds, we find Elisha at the center of a celestial spy network, where her counsel and visions guide the fate of nations. The scenario is tense with the Kingdom of Israel constantly on the brink of war against the Syrians, a threat ever present on its borders. However, it is in this climate of uncertainty and fear that Elisha stands out, his divine connection serving as a compass for the leaders of Israel. The narrative reaches a critical point when Elisha reveals to the King of Israel the secret plans of the King of Syria, repeatedly foiling his ambush attempts. With every move of the enemy, Elisha is there, whispering strategies in the king's ears, his words so precise that the king of Syria himself suspects traitors in his ranks. Who among us is on the side of the king of Israel? He demands, unable to understand how his intentions are known. Elisha's revelation that the true source of information is a man of God in Israel raises history to a new level of intrigue. The king of Syria, obstinate in his mission to capture the troubled prophet, sends an army to surround the city where Elisha resides. The tension is palpable when Elisha's servant gets up one morning to find the city besieged by enemy forces, fear freezing his heart. But Elisha remains undisturbed. Fear not, he says to his frightened servant, for there are more who are with us than those who are with them. With a prayer, Elisha asks God to open the eyes of his servant, revealing a mountain full of horses and chariots of fire around Elisha, a heavenly army ready to protect the prophet from God. The episode proceeds with Elisha, praying that the Syrians will be struck by blindness, then leading them to Samaria, capital of Israel, where blindness is restored. There, instead of ordering their execution, Elisha instructed the king of Israel to feed and release the Syrian soldiers. This act of mercy and divine strategy results in a temporary truce in hostilities, demonstrating the power of compassion over conflict. Elisha's interactions with kings and commanders are not mere curiosities. They are testimony to the fundamental role that spiritual leadership can play in shaping the destiny of nations. In an ancient world, marked by conflict and division, the story of Naaman, the commander of the Syrian army, emerges as a tale of overcoming, faith and transformation. This is not just an account of the physical healing of a ruthless illness, but a deep journey through the turbulent waters of pride and humility, guided by the wisdom of Elisha, a prophet of God. Naaman, a respected and feared warrior whose victories on the battlefield were legendary, stood before an adversary that no sword could defeat, leprosy. This illness not only threatened his life, but also isolated him, branding him with a stigma that transcended his status and power. Despite his conquests, Naaman was powerless, a giant reduced to the shadow of himself by his condition. 
The turn in the story of Naaman begins with a whisper of hope, brought by a young Israelite, captive in her home, who speaks of a prophet in Samaria capable of restoring her health. Driven by hopelessness and the possibility of healing, Naaman begins his journey to Israel, taking with him riches and letters from the king of Syria, hoping to buy his cure. Upon arriving in Israel, Naaman is confronted not only with cultural and political differences, but with a challenge that goes to the heart of his identity. Elisha, the prophet, does not receive him with pomp or ceremony. Instead, he sends a messenger with simple instructions. Go and wash yourself seven times in the Jordan, and your flesh will be restored and you will be cleansed. The simplicity of healing is an insult to Naaman's pride. He expected rituals, direct attention from the prophet, something that would live up to his position. The idea of bathing in the waters of the Jordan, a river he considered inferior to the rivers of his own land, hurts his pride. Naaman turns away angry and unbelieving, unable to see beyond his expectations and prejudices. Here, history reaches its critical point, not in the waters of the Jordan, but in the heart of Naaman. It is the intervention of his servants who encourage humility, who turn the tide. They remind him that if the prophet had asked for something difficult, he would have done so without hesitation. Why not something as simple as bathing in the river? Moved by this realization, Naaman submits to the process, diving seven times into the Jordan. As it emerges from the seventh immersion, its flesh is restored, pure as that of a young man. This miracle, however, is not just a physical healing, it is a transformation of the spirit of Naaman, a lesson in humility, faith, and the understanding that true power lies not in strength or wealth, but in the simplicity of faith and acceptance of divine grace. Naaman's journey is an invitation to reflect on our own prejudices and pride, and how sometimes the healing we seek for our greatest afflictions requires a simplicity and humility that we may find difficult to accept. The story leaves a question hanging in the air. How willing are we to give up our pride to receive the blessings that life, sometimes in unexpected ways, offers? In a world where actions are guided by both faith and human fallibility, the story of Gehazi, the servant of Elisha, unfolds as a cautionary tale against greed and dishonesty. This is not just an isolated episode in a man's life, but a mirror reflecting the temptations everyone faces and the consequences inherent in those who stray from the path of righteousness. Gehazi, who had witnessed the miracles and humility of his master Elisha, found himself faced with a temptation he could not resist. The story reaches a critical point after the healing of Naaman, the Syrian commander, from leprosy. Naaman, overflowing with gratitude, offers Elisha valuable gifts, an offer refused by the prophet, who understood that true healing comes from God and cannot be compensated with material goods. However, Gehazi sees in this refusal not an act of integrity, but a missed opportunity. Driven by greed, he follows Naaman in secret, weaving a lie about Elisha having changed his mind, requesting a portion of the gifts for imaginary visitors. Naaman, unsuspecting of dishonesty, generously grants Gehazi more than he asks. Upon his return, Gehazi hides the fruit of his greed, but what he cannot conceal is the truth of his actions before Elisha. The prophet, endowed with divine vision, confronts Gehazi not only with his lies, but also with the consequences of his actions. The leprosy that once afflicted Nama now takes hold of Gehazi, a visible sign of his inner corruption and a physical reminder of the gravity of his sins. This turn of events is more than a punishment. It is a lesson about the values that shape our lives and the choices that define our character. Gehazi's greed, unlike Elisha's generosity and faith, reveals a fundamental human flaw. The desire for material gains above spiritual and moral values. The fall of Gehazi is a moment of deep reflection. In an era where the temptation of greed disguises itself in countless ways, history resonates with the perennial truth that wrong choices bring lasting consequences. Gehazi's leprosy is not only a divine punishment, but a reminder of the importance of living a life marked by honesty, integrity, and an unwavering commitment to good. In a world full of challenges and uncertainties, the life of the prophet Elisha serves as a beacon of hope, illuminating the truth that no request is too small, no problem too insignificant for God's compassionate gaze. 
Among the many chapters that make up his extraordinary journey, the minor miracles performed by Elisha resonate with a profound message about divine care and the subtle yet powerful life lessons. Our story unfolds in the simplicity of everyday life, where Elisha, surrounded by his disciples, faces challenges that at first glance may seem trivial, but that reveal the depths of divine providence and mercy. First, there is the incident of the deadly stew, a meal prepared with good intentions, but inadvertently poisoned by wild herbs. As panic sets in among the men who begin to eat, Elisha's calm and confidence emerge as an anchor. With a handful of flour, he neutralizes the poison, turning the deadly stew into a nutritious meal. This act, though it may seem modest, carries the powerful reminder that God cares about our most basic needs and is always ready to save us from the threats, seen and unseen. Then there is the miracle of the multiplication of the loaves. On a day like any other, before a hundred hungry men, Elisha is presented with a humble offering, 20 loaves of barley and fresh grain. In the human kingdom, it would be impossible for such quantity to feed so many, but in the hands of Elisha, it becomes a testimony of the inexhaustible provision of God. With a blessing, the loaves are multiplied, leaving not only enough to satisfy everyone, but also leftovers, an echo of the miracle of the loaves and fishes that would come in the New Testament. These miracles, though they may seem minor in comparison with the division of waters or the resurrection of the dead, are indeed immense in their meaning. They teach that God is not just a God of great gestures and dramatic moments. He is present in the daily concerns of life, attentive to our most worldly needs, ready to intervene with His grace, even in situations that we may consider small or ordinary. These stories of Elisha serve as a window into the soul of the divine, revealing a God who delights in caring for His children in every aspect of their lives. They invite reflection on the many ways God manifests Himself in everyday life, often in ways we can easily ignore or underestimate. In the end, the message is clear. No problem is too small for God, and His presence and care permeate every aspect of our existence, offering not only sustenance and security, but also unwavering love and compassion. In an ancient world where battles between nations were as frequent as the changing seasons, the story of Elisha, a prophet whose faith shaped the fate of Israel, stands as a beacon of hope and divine power. At a time when fear and uncertainty surrounded the people of Israel, Elisha not only confronted the Syrian forces with courage, but also demonstrated that true strength lies in dependence on God. Elisha's legacy, however, transcends the miracles and teachings of his life. After Elisha passed away and was buried, the narrative tells us about a remarkable event that occurred. While some of the Israelites were burying a man, they saw a band of Moabite raiders approaching. In the ensuing panic, the man's body was hurriedly thrown into Elisha's grave. As he came into contact with the bones of Elisha, the dead man revived and stood on his feet. This posthumous miracle not only highlights the holiness of Elisha as a man of God, but also serves as a lasting testimony to the power of God, which is not limited to human constructions of time and space. The ability of Elisha's bones to bring life is a palpable demonstration that God's presence and his ability to work miracles did not end with the physical death of the prophet. The story of Elisha offers a journey rich in drama, teachings, and reflections. His interactions with kings, his confrontation with Syrian forces, and the miracles he performed serve as a reminder that even in times of great adversity, faith in God can open ways to unimaginable solutions. Elisha teaches us that true leadership is marked not only by the ability to accomplish great deeds, but by humility, compassion, and an unwavering faith that inspires others to trust God. As we delve into Elisha's rich spiritual heritage, we are reminded of the transforming power of faith, divine power, and mercy that shaped his life from countless miracles, thoughtful decisions, and piercing teachings. This journey through the life of Elisha calls us to a deep insight into our own spiritual paths, encouraging us to pursue a path illuminated by robust faith and actions that resonate with divine inspiration. Understanding the thirst for guidance, 
fortitude, and communion that animates our journeys of faith. I am pleased to share a resource especially made to meet these spiritual pursuits. In the first comment pinned below, you'll find a link to an exceptionally designed ebook for those on your spiritual journey. This is not merely a guide, it is a companion through 52 weeks of deep reflection, daily practice, and prayer, meticulously inspired by the vast stories and biblical teachings. In this spirit of reflection and spiritual search, I will leave here a suggested video that I consider unmissable about the story of Ishmael, the forgotten son of Abraham. This video not only complements our current discussion, bringing to light one more fascinating biblical narrative, but it also invites us to explore the complexities of family relationships and the divine promises that intertwine across generations. I see you a few seconds from now.